Best of R slash Entitled Parents Episode 184. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. My father verbally hates and mocks my work while still using me constantly for gifts and cards. I live with my parents. I do everything and anything they say for the sake of keeping the peace and knowing that it's their house, their rules. My curfew is 7.30pm. I'm nearly 20. ETC etc. Because I'm not allowed to leave the house frequently, I spend a lot of time with my art. I do art as a hobby and recently I've been trying to get into commissioning and freelance work for the sake of saving money. 10 year old me would have wanted to pursue an art career, to be honest. My father always mocks my work. When I was drawing in my first sketchbook when I was in 5th grade, he would look over my shoulder and be like that's the scariest thing I've ever seen. That girl is very ugly. You spend a lot of time on something you're not good at. He used to call me over to his computer and show me videos of professional artists and say, these are real artists, you want one. Anything that isn't hyperrealism is bad art, according to him. And since my art is not realistic enough for him, he says, you just like drawing trashy anime and Disney characters. Fun fact, my art style is not like manga, Disney, or anything vaguely similar and I'm a personal fan of neither of those things, nothing wrong with them. BTW, it's just preference. That being said, whenever there's an obligatory card or gift to be given, he has the audacity to demand that I produce a handmade piece of work for it. No questions asked. Most recently, it was a graduation card. He made me recreate it thrice because he didn't like the paper, subject, writing style, etc, etc. I don't even know the kid that well. I spend a lot of time on my art. I'm trying to make money because I'm paying my way through school. It's frustrating that he thinks he can use me for my art anytime he wants while playing the other end and constantly hating what I produce when it's not specifically for his benefit. Edit. Thanks for all the encouraging comments everyone. It's been surprising. I have no idea why I've never said number. I guess I'm scared of his reaction but I'll definitely do it next time. And I really appreciate everyone asking to see my work. I'll PM my links to anyone interested. Thank you. Next. Teaching entitled students, the only child. I am back with another entitlement tale from the classroom. EM. Entitled mom. ES. Entitled student. OP. Me. This student was an entitled only child. This was during my music years after my music prodigy student. ES was in first grade and was an entitled student. She believed she had all kinds of allergies and sicknesses because her mom told her so. She would come to class and tell me she could not sit next to specific students because her mom told her she didn't have to. She would tell me she didn't have to sing if she didn't want to because her mom told her she didn't have to. If we played a game in class and she lost, she would stomp her foot and get mad and say she was not playing anymore. It became a little tug of war in class with her every day. One day ES walks into to music class with a set of headphones. The really big noise cancelling ones. Now, these are normal for students with exceptionalities or sensory issue but she had neither of those. At least not from what the testing could tell at her age. Not to mention they were her own pair from home. Not the ones we provided at the school. OP. I see you have headphones today? ES. Yes. I do. OP. Can you share with me why you have those today? Yes, my ears hurt because this class is too noisy and my mom said I could wear them and just sit down. We had issues with her not wanting to do the Christmas concert too. OP, well if you just sit down and don't practice, then you won't be able to sing during the spring concert. Yes, you can't do that, we are all are allowed to sing at the concert. OP, it is your choice. You can sit out with your headphones and not sing or you can practice with the rest of us and sing. ES was not happy and put the headphones over her ears and sat out the whole class time. Trying to be proactive because we had a similar issue at Christmas, I emailed the EM telling her all about the situation. This was her response. EM, I already know what happened. ES already told me. If ES says her ears hurt from noise, you need to accommodate her and let her wear the headphones. She is an easy child and you're making it harder by not helping her when she needs it. She has already told me she doesn't want to sing in music anymore or for the concert and I fully support her. If you could just give her something else to do during music class, like reading or drawing, that would be great. Thanks. 
I guess I wasn't aware of the option to pick and choose what your elementary student does in school, silly me. I took it to my admin, the one who had already dealt with music prodigy kid from my other reddit post, to which she had grown tired of these situations. Her response was, well if she wants a child to do something else, we will let her do something else. We ended up gathering all the items that needed to be deep cleaned from the class like caddies, utensils, chairs etc. When the next class time came, we told ES that because she didn't want to sing anymore, she would sit in the admin's office and clean for 45 minutes. EM ended up calling, which we knew she would, and telling us how unprofessional and wrong it was to have her child cleaning during school hours. We informed her that, by her own omission, she supported her ES choice to not sing and we accommodated her by giving her something to do appropriate to her level of learning. ES begrudgingly sang for the rest of the year. She was a nightmare at the actual spring concert. Once her class had sang their pieces, ES was sitting with her mom in the audience who let her roll under the seats to the stage. When asked to get her child she responded with, if she is happy, that's all I care about. We ended up taking ES to the back of the gym in between songs to which her mom got up and left with her. Thank you. Next. My dad hits me because I dropped three bananas. I posted a story about my dad in r slash malicious compliance and I got a lot of advice from there. But then the problem was solved so I'll let it go. Then this happened. My dad used to beat me a lot as a kid. This was completely normal where I grew up. So I just shut up. Then when I was about 15 he stopped. This was about the time I hit my growth spurt so I think he finally realized I was growing up. Today he came back from the grocery store and when he came home I was feeding our dogs. We have kennels outside. I fed our German Shepherd as she was friendly with me. I asked my dad what to do with the milk for the Rottweiler and he said to just pour it in his dish and he'll give it to him. He absolutely loves the dog. He made the biggest kennel for him and I'm not exaggerating he loves the dog more than me. The dog is kept locked up. It's not animal cruelty. He has his own backyard and a kennel with two rooms. So back to the story. I poured the milk into his dish and he, the dog, Jack, came to the door and exhaled strongly blowing some hair into it. My dad was pissed and yelled at me for not washing his dish. The hair fell in after I poured the milk in. He then told me to clean the other dog's kennel because she had pooped in it. I did it as I was not doing much at the time. Then this happened. I was going inside. When my dad told me to take the grocery inside. When I was doing so there were a bunch of bananas and three bananas fell down by accident. They were not packed. He flipped out yelled at me and slapped me hard across my face. Half my face is still red. He said it was because I lied and said they fell down by accident. Why else would they fall down? There's nothing I can do about it. I just wanted to rant about my entitled dad. According to him I don't deserve privacy or any stuff I can call my own while I'm staying under his roof. I don't have a choice but to stick with this BS until I get a job. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. Next. Midterm project. Several years ago. I worked as a German teacher at a local middle school. I was hired as a long term sub for a single year, teaching an intro class which lasted three and a half months. Around the halfway point of each trimester, the students were supposed to be given some sort of midterm, but because I didn't like giving paper tests, I instead had them do a project. Look up one item in a German dictionary for each of the 12 colors we had just finished learning in class, and make a small picture book with 12 pages and I even went out of my way to cut paper and staple it together to make books for everyone. I had kids drawing their own pictures, printing them out from Google, handing them in early because they did them so quickly, and even competing to see who could come up with the weirdest objects. It was a fun assignment, an easy A, and very informative for the kids, the perfect school project. However, one girl didn't hand her assignment in. I asked her about it and she swore she handed it in, but I didn't have it in my inbox. I searched everywhere but couldn't find it, so I know I didn't misplace it. Her mother emails me the next day and demands to know where the project is. I explained to her that I never received it and therefore couldn't give her a grade until I received it. I explained the grading policy was to lose 10% for every class day that the assignment wasn't handed in. Class met every other day and that she could hand it in late if she wanted to. The mother insisted I was lying and went to my principal about it. 
The principal asked me to explain the assignment to him, then rolled his eyes and apologized, saying this girl's mother pulled the same thing with a project the previous year in another class, and that the kid was never held accountable for anything. I explained the grading policy to him, as established by my department, and he tells me to just keep reminding the girl of the assignment, and eventually called the mother and told her, once again, that this is our grading policy and that we can't make an exception. Her response, but my daughter worked hard on the project. She works hard in class. She deserves an A. I had to laugh to myself. I had almost two dozen kids in that class who deserved as. They deserved as because they earned as for handing in A-level work. It's been a few weeks and I still don't have the book in my hands. And now I'm more or less forced to give the girl a zero. Between when the project was assigned and the next incident, I gave the girl at least three blank books none of which were handed in. The very same day I enter the zero in the grade book, though, I get called back into the principal's office because apparently the mother had called the superintendent. He said just so she stops wasting the superintendent's time. Can you just make an exception to the grading policy? I sigh and agree to do so, and he responds, when she hands in the assignment, give her whatever grade you think she really deserves, other than a zero. I nod and leave the office. I send the mother an email with our ultimatum. She has until the last day of class to hand in the assignment. If it's 100% correct, I'll give her full credit, which is obviously more than fair, considering we're a good 15 class meetings past the project due date. On the very last day of school, I get the project. It's only half done. I enter a grade of 50% in the grade book and within seconds, I get an angry email from the mother that is cc'd to the principal the superintendent, and several other people whose names I don't even recognize. I responded with a screenshot of the previous email I sent her with our terms, shut down my laptop, and hand it into the IT office. On the way out the door, the principal actually thanks me for everything I did and says she's going to try to get you fired for this, you know. We share a laugh and I leave the building for the last time. You can't get someone fired who doesn't work there, after all. Thank you, next. Minecraft Realm EB. First post here. Don't judge. Slanted text his actions. This story happened on a Minecraft Prisons Realm. For those who don't know what Prisons is, it's a server where you get to mine and level up for better mines. So, on with the fun. Me. Molten Egg. EB. Entitled Brat. M. Mod. A buddy of mine. RP1. Random person. RP2. Random person. This story is a true story w slash outer Karen. Sorry. Let the fun begin. QME and RP1 RP1. Joins. Me. Hey RP1. I'll give you a boost. Proceeds to give him 10 meters dollar sign. RP1. Wow. What happened to my money? That's a lot. Thanks. Me. No problem. Nice to help you. RP2. That was quite wholesome. Me. Me. Thanks. I was feeling quite generous. QEB. EB. Hey you gave him 10 meters dollars. I want some money. ME. Chooses to ignore him. EB. Proceeds to tag everyone on the server hey someone give me money. Everyone. No. EB. Proceeds to spam about not getting money and begging. Thank you. Next. EA doesn't control her legal age daughter. I figured this was a good enough place to start. If you know of any other subs to put this in. Please let me know. So, previously I wrote a story about my cousin, Ruby's vacation with her mother and brothers. Recently, my aunt decided to do go to my dad about something incredibly petty. Ruby, cousin, 18, me, obviously Lily, EA, early 40s, Jackson, MD, mid 40s, Opal, grandmother. So some backstory. Lily has held a grudge against my mother for 10 years and one against my grandmother for about 5. This has included cutting off all contact with both, not allowing her children to see Opal, and not even discussing Opal or my mother. A couple weeks ago I was talking to Ruby and mentioned how Opal wasn't doing well, that she was falling a lot more, getting hurt, just, old age, you know? Ruby is legally an adult and therefore can make her own choices without Lily affecting her decisions. It's important to note, I offered to give Ruby Opal's number and I was the one who initially put them in contact with one another. 
I'm overseas right now and I don't know when I'll be back in that area. So I felt Opal needed the reminder that her grandchildren do love her. So Ruby reached out to her and they spent a couple of hours just talking and catching up. When Ruby mentioned that she had a girlfriend, not a boyfriend, all Opal said was, you should come up here to visit me, I'd love to meet her. Ruby made the, I'm sure very difficult, decision to tell Lily she was talking with Opal so it wouldn't be a shock later. Lily had her fit, got uppity about not wanting to discuss Opal, and it seemed to be the end of it. But, dear readers, we all know it wasn't. FF2 about a week and a half later, I'm at work, dead tired. And I get a message from my dad, Jackson. Jackson tells me vaguely that Lily contacted him. My feelers immediately went up and I casually talked with him about it. When I asked him what happened, I got an earful. Basically about you possibly giving grandma info or Ruby's info when she wants nothing to do or anything about her given to her. I normally wouldn't have cared since I try to wash my hands of that, but as I pointed out to Jackson. Great. And my response is... Ruby is 18. She's legally allowed to do whatever tf she wants. Ruby already told me about all that, and we both agreed it was never going to be mentioned again. The rest of the conversation was us discussing Lily, but looking back, I can't stand this woman sometimes. She went to my father and bitched about what my cousin did because I was trying to help my cousin. The problem now is, if I think too much about it, I start to feel a little guilty. Thank you. Next. EK, we are best friends now we will watch Po RN films together. This is the story of me and my roommates. Cast, me, me nice roommate R1 nice roommate 2 NR2. She was the one who Karen messed up with. Romat 3 EK EK's mommy M. Backstory, it was one year of college and students were looking for renting a place together. So I and three more girls got set up by a broker for a 2BHK apartment. I moved in last but the three girls were living there since 4 days. My family came to drop me and decided to meet NR2's family as they came in too. We went to the apartment and R1 and NR2 were staring at me also the EK wasn't there. I felt weird but decided to ask them what's going on. Cut to the conversation. Me. Hi. My name is slash NDW. NR2 and 1. Hi. Are you a non-vegetarian? Me. Feeling weird. No. In fact I don't even have eggs and not a big fan of dairy either, but why? NR2 and 1, looking at each other and gave a huge sigh. The EK told us that you are an arrogant BTCH who was a non-vegetarian, because that's kind of a thing some people hate, and I have 1000 men who I play around with, basically calling me a sut, and how my dad called her family that how I can't survive without chicken. My family had never contacted her nor had she ever spoken with me. Adding off ways how she will be dealing with me. I was a bit dumbfounded by now and realized why these girls were so worried. I laughed it off and said tell me more about her. The girls felt relaxed and went on and on about her so apparently NR2 and EK were the first ones there when they shared a room. EK, I came here just to get away from my parents and have a great SX life. I want to go to parties and since now we are best friends we can watch Pan together. This was within the first two hours of meeting. NR2 felt bit uncomfortable and decided to call her boyfriend trying to hide it from EK. EK was not having it. EK, you can trust me you know students in my previous school used to save my name as EK. T. T was for trustworthy. Neutral face. And NR2 told her just to get her off her back. Also NR2 told this instance to her mother. I couldn't stop laughing about it. We spent the night laughing about her talks and then the next day EK and her family came in. Obviously both roommates discovering the truths about her decided to maintain their distance. And sit with me in a room well in our defense we were giving them family time BCZ they would be leaving. They called me and asked me to sit in the middle of room like a detention class and accused me of groupism. I was pretty stunned as it was within few minutes of them coming to the apartment. I told her that we, me NR1 and 2 were sitting inside so that they could have some personal time with their daughter. They weren't having it but accused me of more shit that I don't remember. Cut to later that day, NR2's mother came in to talk to the EK and oh my god the fight between NR2's mother EK's mother was priceless. However she did mention about all the sexual stuff and said she didn't want her sharing the room with her as her daughter wasn't comfortable. 
but the EK and DM was not having IT. She told NR2's mother about her boyfriend, you don't do that if you live in India, parents don't like their kids dating, and my oh my with the tears. EMS mother denied anything NR2's mom said and went on like my daughter is an angel and how NR2 was a WH Ray and few slurs that I am not comfortable to say here but threatening them to kick their daughter out. I have had enough of this drama I asked the mothers to leave and sat the EK down she being the bratty child she is tried sugar coating me, me, to be on her side, and the conversation went this way, me, so you think I am a SLTA, EK, no. I find you are really cute. Me. Just cut off the crap and I know everything you said about me and my family what makes you think you that you can say stuff like that about my family no less. I don't really care that much about my family but it sounds so good. I can go up straight to her mother in the college and tell them everything she and her family have been doing harassing students and defaming them no less if she doesn't get her mother to STFU. NR2 was crying so hard by now and I was feeling so bad for her. EK went up to her mother and asked her to back off, and then came up to me asking not to let anyone know about this in college. Like seriously what the hell. I moved out though but sadly the NR2 and NR1 continued to stay there and being harassed by her and her mother. They made NR1 and 2 do all the work even though her mother wasn't supposed to be living there she continued and made their lives miserable by taunting them continuously. And kid you not EM kicked them out of the house in the middle of the night BCZ they crossed the crefew of 8pm. It's not even late. NR1 and 2 didn't attend their fresher party because the EM couldn't take their responsibility if they got into any trouble. Neutral face. Instead she kicked them out on a lonely street. My mother had to travel and 2 hours to get them back from the street in the middle of the night. NR2 was so traumatized by the harassment that she withdrew from the university. Felt a bit anticlimactic but. The EK was kicked out of the university for filming and circulating videos of her friends. I got the news they were sell UAL video but can't stay to what extent. But enough to get her expelled.